Hey guys, this is Sean Alexander with Alexander Tutoring. And today I have a very special lesson for you. We're gonna talk about the golden ratio, uh, which is one of our favorite things over here. Uh, it's an, a ratio that occurs over and over again in, in nature, in the human body, um, uh, even human psychology. Um, so we're gonna talk about that a, a little bit. Um, it really shows how math relates to the natural world and uh, goes along with our thesis that mathematics is the language of our universe. Um, so phi, uh, they use the Greek letter phi to represent uh, this number. It's an irrational number, meaning uh, that it's a decimal that goes on forever without repeating, and it can't be expressed in terms of a fraction. Okay, uh, now where does this number come from? It actually comes from something called the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, the Fibonacci, Fibonacci was an um, Italian uh, mathematician, and it's a pretty simple sequence, but let's take a look at it here. Basically, you start with one. And a sequence, by the way, is just a, a series of numbers that follow a pattern. The second number in the sequence is also one. The third number in the sequence is two. The next number is three, then five. I'll give you a sec here to see if you can see the pattern. Uh, the way this sequence is constructed is by summing or adding the prior two uh, numbers. So you can see here that the sum of one plus one is two, which is the next number in the sequence. And then to get the next one, we look at these two numbers. One plus two is three, which is the next number in the sequence. Two plus three is five. What's the next number? Well, three plus five is eight, and we can continue this forever. Okay, so we go eight, eight uh, plus five is 13. Uh, 13 plus eight is 21 etc. This can go forever. Now, where the heck does that number uh, phi above the 1.618 come from? Well, it's actually a limit that you get from dividing consecutive terms in the sequence. So what I'm going to do now um, is divide each term as we go along. So starting with uh, 1 and 1, so 1 divided by 1 is 1, okay? The next two terms, we're going to divide the bigger one by the smaller one. 2 divided by 1 is 2. Next, 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves, or 1.5. Uh, 5 divided by 3 uh, is 1.6667. Um, six, 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 so we'll just call it 1.667-ish. Um, 8 divided by 5 is 1.6 on the nose. Um, 13 divided by 8 is 1.625. And the last one, 21 divided by 13, of course this can go on forever, is 1.615385. So you can see what's happening here is as we go further in the sequence, the numbers we're getting are actually oscillating about the number phi 1.618, okay? So as we go further down the sequence, if we made a little graph of that, if I made myself a little x, y axis, uh, phi would be at, you know, this is one, two, 1 1.6, let's just say it's roughly here. So here's the number phi, ish, okay, so zero, and then we have one, Two. Uh, and the number, the x, the numbers on the bottom, by the way, are representing the term in the sequence, this new sequence, which is uh, what we get from dividing the Fibonacci consecutive terms in the Fibonacci sequence. So this is uh, term one, which in this case is one. Term two, two, which is two. Term three, which is one point five. Terms four, one point six six. Okay, if we start to graph those, okay, term one is one. Term two is two. Term three is 1.667, uh, which is a little bit above phi. Next one is 1 1.6, which is a little bit below. And then it's 1.625, which is just a little bit above. And then 1.615, which is just a little bit below. Do you see what's happening here? We're starting to, if we carry this out, it would just get smaller, smaller, smaller. And what we can say is, is that in the limit, as we take this sequence out to infinity, uh, we get closer and closer and closer to phi. So that's where it comes from. It's a, it comes from the Fibonacci sequence. 
okay, who cares? That seems kind of random, right? How does this compare to nature? So um, I, there's a lot of things you can do with the number of feet, but what I'm gonna do for today's lesson is construct what's called the golden rectangle. And it's a rectangle that's created using the uh, golden ratio. Now, for the purposes of this discussion, I'm gonna round phi to 1.6, okay? Uh, that'll be close enough for now. And what the golden rectangle is, is what we're gonna do is draw a rectangle where one side, the long side, is 1.6 times the length of the short side. So the way I'm gonna represent that is I can do a 10 square uh, on this graph paper here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. That's 10 squares long on that side. And then the long side of the rectangle, we're going to multiply 10 by 1.6, really it'll be 1.618, but we're rounding here to get the length of the long side. So now we're going to go 16 in this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a square. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And what we have here is called the golden rectangle. Okay. The long side is phi times the short side. So we're saying this is 10 squares and this is roughly 1.6 squares up top. Now what we're gonna do with this rectangle is cut off a square. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 out. And um, what I'm gonna do is make a square out of it. So this, this, th the, this box on the left is a perfect square. And then you'll notice on the right, uh, this guy here is another rectangle. Now, if we did it just super perfect to the golden ratio, it would in fact be an exact uh, golden rectangle. Uh, again, we rounded, so it's not gonna come out perfect, but it's cool that it comes out to be another golden rectangle, meaning the length of this side, again, this is rounded, is what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, what's what, six times 1.6 is 9.6, so it should be roughly 10 with rounding, and we can see that this side is 10. So we get another golden rectangle, which is super cool. Now we're gonna continue this process. I'm gonna square off this re uh, rectangle on the right. So I'm gonna count six down. One, two, three, four, five, six is here. And that's a square. Now, uh, so we made another square here. And you can see that here we have another rectangle. Guess what? Again, uh, if we did everything perfect, that would be another perfectly golden rectangle and that the long side would be 1.618 times the length of the short side. And we're basically gonna continue this process. So now this rectangle here is four. We're gonna square this one off. One, two, three, four. Um, boom, there's another square. And you can see we get another rectangle. We're gonna square that one off. Again, uh, it's starting to get a little off here because we've been rounding. But if we do this perfectly and we keep going and squaring off, you can technically do this process forever. And what you're gonna get is, um, this cool uh, golden rectangle. But here's the really cool part. What we're now gonna do is connect the dots as follows. I'm gonna draw um, an arc that goes through here. You can see how we're connecting the dots here. And technically the spiral goes forever. And we can see this nice spiral here, which is called the golden spiral. Now this is where the big nature connection comes in. It turns out this spiral is, uh, happens to appear in nature in all kinds of crazy places. The one thing that you might notice uh, right away is it looks like one of those Nautilus shell pictures. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? You see those Nautilus shells? They're broken off into chambers and they perfectly follow this golden ratio pattern. Now, even more fascinating is that if we looked at the volume of these chambers, each chamber is 1.6 times the volume of the previous chamber. So if we picked a random chamber, um, say this one here, and then we wanted to look at the volume or the amount of space taken up by the next one up, say right here, well, it, this the yellow one would be roughly 1.6 times the volume of the green one. And then the next one over, this guy, would be 1.6 times the volume of the previous one. Um, so that's a really cool example of the golden ratio. Another thing you might recognize from that shape is if you've ever seen a spiral galaxy, uh, like the Milky Way. Um, well, you haven't seen the Milky Way because you live in it, but uh, if you've seen another spiral galaxy uh, side on, they look something like this, right? Those arms of the spiral galaxy also follow uh, our golden spirals. And 
these spirals occur everywhere in nature, um, and so does the golden ratio. For uh, one last example, I'll give you is uh, if you hold your arm out, the length uh, of the entire arm. Um, uh, if you break the forearm, uh, the, the, the two parts of the arm, um, the, the the length of the entire arm is roughly 1.6 times the length of the, the shorter part of your arm. I think I got that right. <laughs> it's something like that. Uh, and it, uh, and it occurs in plants all the time. Um, so this is what we think. This is a great example of what we think is really cool at Alexander Tutoring. Um, so I hope you enjoyed our lesson on the Fibonacci sequence in the Golden Spiral. I'll see you next time. Take care.